Hi guys, um, welcome to my bathroom, which is actually like an oven because it's all glass and that's why I'm wearing next to nothing because I'm going to be sweating and I don't know what I'm doing, so my head's going, so yeah. So I've got myself a nice cool bottle of kombucha to try, to try and calm my nerves. Okay, so I'm just waiting for Craig to, um, here he is, I think this is him. Let's have a look. View. I think he's going to join us. Poor guy's stuck in South Africa. Can't get home. Hang on a second. Um, so I just thought, you know, may as well use his expertise and talk me through how to deal with grey roots and highlights simultaneously. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find him. Because this is going to be really bad. Let's see. This is going to, we're going to have to be really fast to get through this because normally it takes me ages to do my hair. Hang on, he's trying to connect. In the meantime... Hello! 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 Oh, you started early. Oh, no, it's one o'clock, isn't it? It's, it's one o'clock here, I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh, had two I've breakfasts and three here. coffees. <laughs> I mean, I don't want you drinking on the job. Really yeah, like yeah. don't advise that you drink... Don't do too much of this before you start, though. That is the one... That'll be my first piece of advice for you all. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we Don't want too much wine. Right, let's crack on, because we are aware of time. We've only got an hour. Yes. So, and this is yep. quite complicated. So, I've not washed my hair on purpose, so it's not silky. It's still a bit greasy, so we can stick it. Hang on a cool. second. Yep. So, basically, while I'm sectioning it, um, do you know what I'm going to do? When I'm mixing up the colour, you can explain how to do... Yes, I will save the story. You can explain about how to choose your colour and everything because I need all my yep. proper concentration to do this. Okay, first of all, what are the tools? What, what am I going to do now? I'm going to section it, right? So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to section it. So I know you want to highlight the front. So what yeah. you're going to need to do, if you've got either a highlighting comb like this or if you have... I couldn't get a metal. I couldn't get the metal end. It's still quite thick. That's so. fine. These are more for highlights anyway. But um, if you if you don't have one of them, if you've got the end of the tint brush, which obviously is still pointy as well, um, right. that would be included with the pack. Um, just take. All you're going to need to do is just re section, separate your highlights from the darker okay. bit. Do I do that? Do I do that before I'm going to section it? Yeah. Yes, Hello. because you're going to need to I, get I'm that looking out. Looking down, it's because I've got another mirror here as well. So bear that's with fine, me. no that's problem. So what you're going to need to do is just all around your front hairline, just remove all of them highlights. Why should I do that? I'll have a glass of wine. Oh my god! Look here. I, know. Oh, I feel like <laughs> I'm onto some sort of massive Annika challenge. But right, hang on, see. <laughs> You need to take so, a bit of really like, I, I always wear my hair up, so I can't yeah. do my highlights in the assumption of my hair is going to be tied back. So I like that streak yeah. effect. So I've got less highlights than I've ever had, really, the way I do this. Right, okay. I think that's got most cool. of it. Can I just tie that in a ponytail? Like, yeah, just yeah. tie it in a ponytail, or just you can put it in a really loose flat. Um, if you want to do, make sure if you want to keep them highlights in the sides as well, you need to get them in as well. Oh, right, okay, hang on. So you need to go all the way around your hairline to get them all out. This is going to be so frustrating for you. How many thousands of hairs <laughs> And you've got this number. It's a good job I've been educating for quite in a few years. In a sweating in the bathroom. Right, hang on. <laughs> so frustrating, eh? I'm not expecting everybody to be a hairdresser, but if you do have some sort of sectioning clips or even Kirby grips would work quite well. I know it's something that we all have lying around the house, even myself, and I don't have enough hair. Um, but Kirby grips would be quite a good little thing just to sort of keep that out of the way a little bit. Um, okay. So, so I've sort of, can you see what I've done there? I've sort of got yep, those wispy perfect. bits out the way. The sun's so bright. Oh my God, look how grey I am. Do you know what? My granddad went grey when he was in like his 30s. And I think I've inherited that bloody gene. And trust me to what oh, I've really? had. You see, I, I decided to blend all of mine whilst I've been on holiday. Yeah, I did notice you've got blonde. 
to my <laughs> So what happens so when you're locked down? You've got nothing else so better to do. Right, okay, so I think I've made You're that done? sort of safe. Right, yeah, okay. let's have a look, no, pop no. your head down. Perfect, brilliant, yeah. You're never going to get all of it. Don't don't try and make this too neat, because you're never going to get all of it covered up. I um, just want to get, get rid of this grey on the crown. Yeah, keep my exactly. Because I don't want to yeah. go over the colour again with bleach, because it'll just go orange. No, exactly. Okay, so... so. Obviously, like you've been doing, give it a good brush first. Yeah, you need to make sure you get all of the knots and everything out because if you don't, when you come to try and section the hair, it's just going to become really difficult. Um, so just give it, make sure you get all of them knots and everything out. Oh my God, I've got so much grey coming through. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you know what? There's That'll be gone soon. There's a supplement that I do take, but I've not taken it enough, clearly. And it's called right. Astrozanthi. And basically, yeah. it's from the, uh, like, you know what makes a lobster red and a, pro a pearl yes. red? It's part of the oil there. And apparently, that not only is a natural SPF for when you're sunbathing, it stops your hair from going grey. So I am going to, like, work really? Yeah, I'll do an experiment. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Right. right. So, what you're going to do now, from the middle of your hairline, yeah. yeah. With the end of your comb, I want you to draw a line all the way back down to the nape of your neck. Right, right to the back of my neck, okay. Right to the back of the neck. Hang on, um, Davinia, have you mixed the colour yet? No. Mix Go the mix colour. the colour first, and then we'll... Okay, yeah, because right. As you, you, as you about it, we'll colour. be applying the colour. Okay, so I've got two colours here. Now, obviously, I was in the supermarket. I was in Mercadona, mm -hmm. which is the equivalent of our Tesco. And I managed to pick up <laughs> a couple. Okay. Um, I was basically looking for the brush, mm -hmm. to be honest. But I found, so I've got a dark chestnut blonde here, which is 6.7. And Matthew also okay. got me a 7.7, .7, which is marron tidy, which I, which I don't know what that means, brown something. One looks a bit redder. Right, so what you've got to think about, it, yeah, so the, so the number before the dot, so that's a 7.7, yeah. 7, and that's a 6.7. The number before yeah. the dot indicates how dark the hair is going to be. So the, the, the yeah. higher the number, the darker the colour. Oh, right, okay. So what, you've, so what you've got to think about here is if you go too light, you're going to expose even more warmth. So I'd, if you want it, if you want it to be, if you want to be more neutral, I'd probably go with the six as opposed to the seven because you may end up being a little bit too red because you're going to end up lifting your natural hair colour a little bit. Okay, so I go for the six point seven. I'd probably go with more six because you're going to be a bit safer. Whilst you're applying, okay. I'll go through what all of the different colours and everything mean as well. Um, okay, fine. I'm going to take one. Right. So I've got my mixture here. So I'm just going to mix all of it because I can't be bothered measuring. Do I, because they want me to tip that into that. Uh, yep, so the, so the, 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 the in here. You can do, yes. Yeah. So what, obviously that one's not come with an application bottle. So no. what you can, and with a brush, sorry. So what you can do is you can just mix all of them into the bowl and just mix them together right. with the brush. So it's like high, 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 high. Okay, right, okay. Hi everybody, by the way, sorry, I'm not going on to saying hello to everybody. Right, I've mixed so, that, Craig, right, look. Perfect. So that's all mixed together. Brilliant. Absolutely perfect. So you'll find you'll get some of them that don't. I'll go through all of this in a bit. You start sectioning. So what you're going to do is from the middle of your hairline, draw a section all the way down to the back of your neck. Right. Yep. And then separate them two sections for me. Oh my God, it's got so greasy. Hang on. Let's go again. Now, Greasy, actually, that's a really good point, Davinia. So having the hair slightly dirty is better than having it freshly washed. Why is um, that? Because, because conditioner will cause a barrier on the hair. So it will close the cuticle in the hair too tightly, so therefore it will it'll kind of cause it to... It'll struggle to develop it, especially if you've got slightly resistant hair. Um, so there was a reason why I didn't bother washing my hair for a week. So this old wives tale about washing your hair before you go to the hairdressers is false. Um, oh, so okay, it, it so is actually better. Perfect. That's brilliant. Okay. So what you're going to do wow, with, like with the colour, because <laughs> it's the look, isn't it? <laughs> it's the look. It's this that's so driving me. 
Right, sorry, go. No, sorry. Now so what, what you're going to do now is you're going to apply colour to either side of that parting all the way down. Right, right the way down. Head. All the way down, either side. You're going to use the colour to be able to help you separate the sections in the hair. Okay. Be oh liberal. Right. Yeah, don't get... Don't be... Right, let me do don't it really skimp good. on it. Don't yep. skimp. Oh, right, okay. Don't skimp on it, but at the same time, don't... You only want to cover your roots, remember? Yeah? Yeah. Put some more tint on your bush, Davinia. Sorry. Frugal. <laughs> yeah, right. Flipping big spender here. Flipping up. Right, okay. <laughs> Please, Matthew's not here to hear that. Do you, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, and now I've got the back as well. So you're going to do that going all the way down the back. This is a bit, I look like, I look like some sort of lioness. Oh, I know my hands <laughs> are going to go brown. I can't cope with any more gloves. I can't. Yeah, so help and save. I bought this, which is like a tint should. remover. Yeah. It's just like a tint remover. You know what? My yeah. mum always had dyed hands as well. She says it's a sign of a good hairdresser, so. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Got it, got it. I've got roots, right, okay, so I'm going to turn around so you can kind of see it in the mirror behind. Am I doing that right? Yes, perfect. Perfect, all the way down. So, something I will point out just whilst you're doing this, Javinia, what some of the things that people need to make sure that they do, obviously, a, a tint. A tint application bottle will only have so much tint in it. And you need to be quite liberal when you're putting the colour on, otherwise you're going to get quite an iridescent coverage. Um, oh, right. If you've got quite a thick head of hair, my advice would be to buy two boxes. Okay. Because once you've Any brand out... in particular? Who would you go for? Because there's loads of, like, natural ones and stuff out there. Which... Yeah, I would... Personally, I would always try and go with brands that have a presence within the hairdressing professional community so if you can get weller if you can get l'oreal um any of them sort of brands um one thing i would i can't stipulate enough stay away from henna if anybody once you put henna on your hair it is the hardest thing in the world to get rid of so how many clients have you had that come in and said well i got this yeah at home I, well i'll tell you i'll tell you what you've been cosmopolitan 20 I, years ago I once asked somebody five times and she still kept saying no. And then when I started bleaching her hair, it went bright green. So believe me, believe yeah. me, if they ask, we're asking for a reason. Just don't do it. Just don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah. Right, okay. So this is where I get confused. I can do that. I get that. So you've done that bit. Perfect. So what I want you to do now is from the crown, I want you to divide the front to the back. So okay. from the so crown from, from the top, down from to there. the ear. Yep, and take, take a line down to your ear. Okay. Okay, I think I've done that. Is that low enough? Is, is it down? Yep, yeah, that's fine, that's perfect. Okay, I'm just going to tie And the same way, Davinia. What? Paint that section now whilst you've got it in your hand. Okay, I'm done. I cannot do it possibly with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Oh my god, right, okay. Um ah! Hi Susie. <laughs> Hello, one of my clients from Wiggins there. Hi um, how's Wigan? <laughs> when are you getting home, by the way? Well I found out today that I'm going home. I've oh, been given a flight. Well, I've not been given a. F I've not been given a flight, but we've. Um, they are starting the flights this week, so hopefully, hopefully by the end of this week or beginning of next, I should be home just in time for Craig and Cameron's birthdays. Oh, perfect. Right, so. okay. right. I've done that. Have, an hour. Have I got enough far? Um, come a little bit closer. You're still a little bit far away from the camera there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So do exactly okay. the same now on the other side. Pull the bobble out of your hair, Javin, and you'll notice now that your hair doesn't move. Okay. Yeah? Okay. The tint will help you to keep the sections separated, so you don't need to worry too much about keeping them apart. If you do want to, and if, like yourself, you don't have any bobbles or anything flying around, 
doing quite loose plaits in them just to keep the hair sectioned away um, can be quite helpful just so you've got a little bit more free hands to work with. How are you getting on? I think I'm, I'm doing okay. It's handy having these bubbles. I wish I had clamps, like, like proper hairdressers use, but if yeah. they don't have anything yeah, if, um... okay. You know, I'm trying to make out I'm going for essential shopping, and I'm there with like four yeah. <laughs> and a great. Mm. And the fact that you've got a house full of boys, so, so oh. hair, hair essentials is probably <laughs> not oh, something okay. that's high on the... Um... <laughs> oh, look, right, okay, so that's there. Yep. It's not, it's not absolutely symmetrical, is that okay? That's fine, it's just so, you've got, it's just so you're not working with two larger sections whilst you're doing it. Oh my God, imagine all the hairdressers now just going mad at me going, oh, messes up. I know, do you know? <laughs> but it's like you're saying, it's, it's just, you know, it, it can't be professional because that's not what I am. Yeah, and this is the thing, I think, you know, obviously whilst we're all in this situation, you know, we are going to have to try and make do with as best as what we can. Um, I don't, I, I, I would just like to point out, Davinia, I am not condoning what you're doing. Yeah, as a professional hairdresser, this is not me saying <laughs> everybody. I could be here till the hair. end of June. If you think yeah. it's coming out of my you've got another thing coming. Exactly. No, yeah. And none of us know how long we're going to be doing this for. None of us know what's good what's going to be going on so you, we are going to have to try and make do as much as we possibly can um yeah. right okay moving on Whilst okay, like so that that now, yep so what you're going to do now with this no keep that free keep oh, right, that section okay. free you're going to start on that section now oh, right, so what okay. you could, what you're going to do is with the end of your bush or your comb you're just going to draw yeah. sections horizontal sections across the head, like this. With each section, you're going to paint the colour on. Okay. And how 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 deep are these sections? Right. Try not to go too thick, because you How's need to like? make sure that you can still see the colour coming through the bottom of that top section. Otherwise, you've done it too thick. Hang on, let me try and get this right. Right. Okay. With hair about the texture of yours, you could afford to do it slightly thicker than other people's. But in general, I would recommend that try not to go too thick because you need to be able to see that colour still coming through a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to get quite a patchy result. Okay. So how, 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 how's that? Yep, I would say that's perfect for you. Okay. I need so to then all you're going to do okay. now is you can drop that section down. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then just, put, then just paint the roots. And now you're going to do that going all the way down this section. I'm worried about that bit here. Oh my God, you'll be going mad at me here. <laughs> my fingers just... are itching. Do you mean you're oh, no. oh my God, it's like torture, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're just going to work on doing that all the way down. That okay. side now. Yeah. Whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to go through a few questions that have already been fired. Um, okay, perfect. Fired. Brilliant. Because I need all, all my right. concentration. Yes. So, um, with regards to choosing the right tint, again, I am going to reiterate, I do not condone this, yeah? I know that we're in a bit of a different situation at the minute. I know that things are hard. And I could sit here and tell you all not to do home colours, but none of you are going to listen to me. So, no. I'd, I'd rather be able to give you as much advice as I can in order for you to get it as, as close to being right as possible instead of, instead of just making a complete mess. But when you do so, get like back it, to your actual hairdresser, minimal damage, right? So yeah, so then when you do eventually get back to us, we're not in too much of a problem tackling <laughs> So, first off, when you're looking for a hair colour, um, the thing you want to look for, essentially, is how dark you want this hair colour to go. Um, so, what you essentially doing so like i explained to davinia before she's currently using a 6.7 so the number six the number before either the dot or before the slash depending on which brand you're using that will determine how dark the hair color is going to be so the lighter the color the higher the number so with number 10 is your lightest blonde that's what we would use before we use a bleach 
bring that down all the way down until you can get up to about a number one. Some shades will do a one and a two. Some shades won't have a number two in it. Um, but 10 is your lightest, one is your darkest, one is black, okay? Don't be fooled by the names because, like Davinia's already pointed out, number six for Davinia actually says it's a blonde. Now, as you can see by Davinia's hair colour, she isn't blonde, yeah? But a number six is the, is the darkest blonde that we can have before we hit brunette, yeah? It's a, something that's baffled hairdressers for years and years and years. I don't know why they call number six a blonde, but they do. So what, what you're wanting to do at first is determine your shade colour, yeah? The number after, this is why I hope you've all got some pens and papers as well, because this is quite important. The number after... Pens and the paper and a glass of wine. It's pens and paper and a glass of wine ready. The number after the dot or after the slash will determine the tone of which the hair colour is going to be. Yeah? So just a few quick tones that you've got. Number one, if it's a point one or a stroke one, that is an ash colour. So if you're wanting as little warmth in your colour as possible, go with something like a point one. Yeah, and that's going to try and reduce as much as that redness or golden or anything like that through the colour. Normally you'll find there isn't a number two. We don't have a number two. Um, number three would then be your gold. So anything that's more of like a golden brown, don't confuse gold with red. They are two very different things. So more of a golden type brown, think... Jennifer Aniston type brown. That's what, Ooh, that's, that's, nice, that's, gold, yeah. that's a golden brown. Yeah, so that's what that's what you'll be looking for. And number four is a copper. So that's again, don't make, don't confuse the two. Copper generally tends to be focused on the orange. So think of um, gosh, Emma Stone. Thank you, Joe. I, I was. My, my housemate just helps me out there. So think of Emma Stone, that sort of coppery colour, yeah? That is the number four. And number five is when you're working more with your reds, your bright reds. A six would be a violet tone. A number seven, which is what Davinia's using at the minute, is what we call a chestnut tone. So that's got a mixture of a few different, a few <laughs> different tones in it. Um, it will give you quite a neutral look in brown. It will add that warmth without it being too red or too golden. So it'll just give it a nice natural <laughs> shimmer. <laughs> and number eight and a number nine, again, are ash colours. So again, they're the sort of things that you want to look at. You'll probably find a lot of the time that eights and nines won't be too closely related to any darker colours. So anything from sort of like an eight below, you won't get an eight or a nine in. Craig, that I've just so. to interrupt you, sorry. I've just finished where I I've, I've noticed that the grey was manageable. So yep. it's kind of okay, like way is like on the crown. You don't have to do all of it, yeah? Right. For this, I would say, just make it important that what people can see, it's hidden. Yeah, so if you I get mean, down... no one's seeing me. Exactly. Me. <laughs> and no like, one should be I seeing anybody, me, that's so. the point. <laughs> so but it, it's just you... like you just feel a bit shit if you don't. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It, it just... does, you know, it does, and your hair is what defines you as a person. So, you know, you need, you need to feel good even if you're not allowed to go outside. But even if people do down to their temples and just on their front hairline, just so that what you're visually looking at when you look in the mirror looks better. So exactly. now you do Right, so I just wanted to move on and do... Do I yeah. do the other side exactly the same? You're going to do all of it exactly the same now. OK, I'm just concerned about the light. Can you guys see? It's like flipping... Few gardens in, honestly. Okay, I'm going to try it as best as possible because then I want to do the highlights. Which yeah. Is like... So whilst you're doing that, um, you also, on, sorry, I won't interrupt if you look at Davinia's hair now, you will notice the colour looks quite dark. The colour it's oxidising. That's what happens with anything when oxygen hits it. So don't be too concerned about it looking really dark through development. Yeah. It will once it's rinsed, it will become a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um. So there are different tones, there are different colours. If you're going with, if you want a darker colour, or say if you're going with a number, if you, say if you want your colour like Davinia's to be a number six, and you put an ash tone in it, it will appear to be a little bit darker than what a number six would normally work with. So if you're wanting a, if you're wanting a more ashier colour, go with a lighter base. If you're wanting a more warmer red or violet, go with a lighter base because the light will reflect, the warmth will reflect the light, the ash will 
suck the light in. So we'll always look a bit darker. Um, as you can see with Davinia, when she bought this colour, there wasn't an application brush and there wasn't a application bowl either. It all come very much with um, just an application bottle. There's nothing wrong with that. You can use the tip of the bottle to do exactly what Davinia is doing now with the comb. All you need to do is just use it, separate it, squeeze just a fine line of colour on the parting, and then you can just massage it in at your root. Yeah, so if you don't have a brush and you don't have a bowl like Davinia does, you can still use a um, the, the nozzle. And all you need to do is just, wet. Davinia's doing it now, just squeeze a line on that part in and then just rub it in. And that will help to blend the, co the colour in. So you don't need to worry if you don't have a tin a brush or you don't have a tin bowl. They're obviously more useful and user-friendly, but... Not everybody has them. I know that Davinia had to do a mad shock to go and get one yesterday. Um... You know what I ended up with? Look. <laughs> so I went to the first pharmacy, and the only thing I could find that had a brush in was just for men with a little beard brush. <laughs> I need that because my oh, beard's going it. ginger. <laughs> You've got highlights, babe. That's all. That's all. Yeah, in my, so in my beard. Mixed in with grey. It's not good. <laughs> oh, my God. Sweet home. So right. that... <laughs> So just sort of trying to give you an idea of what the sort of colours that you need to be looking at. So your, your base colour is the first number. The tone of the colour is your second number. Hi, Tracy. Um, yes, Craig, it is essential shopping. I completely agree with you on this one. And um, that's my fiance. Uh, mental health. Best friend. Um, Literally, though, my mental health will waver. Because we all get stuck in our own habits, don't we? You, like little you do, well. and... You know, it's, it's really good to feel, you still need to feel good whilst we're, whilst yeah. we're in this environment. Yeah, you still need, yeah. because it's hard enough being stuck inside as it is without then looking in the mirror and feeling like you just look yes. dreadful as well. Right. Um, I've made a mess of this. Fact, right, I've really made a mess of this one. If Put you're on aware one. yourself that you have quite stubborn grey hairs, so if you've been to the salon before and you've found in certain areas it's not always covered, if you've got any colour left over, go back and reapply the colour. So what you're doing then is really pushing the colour down into the cuticle of the hair, yeah? You'll find that the bottle will probably tell you to leave it on anywhere between 25 to 35 minutes, yeah? If you've got slightly more stubborn hair, then I would advise to do it about 40 or 45 minutes. Right. Um, oh my god, it's all gone into one now. So what does you're going to do... Does it matter? No. Because no, I've, no, I've you're done the crown, and yep. what I've done is, I'm like avoiding the blonde, sort of like I've got baby hair here that never works anyway, and that's what I yeah. normally lift. But I think yeah. I've got most of the grey. What I'm going to do is get me just for men beard brush out. <laughs> you're very well prepared, Javinia. <laughs> I'm just going to do a tiny little, I'm just going to get in to there. So there's a tiny Perfect. bit of grey from, I've put my highlights in, if you know what I mean. So Dee, if you need those. a job when you get back from Spain, you can come work. Is there a job for me back in Wigwam Bam? Yeah. <laughs> you can Let's come and work in Wigwam Bam with me. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm in King Street, I've got a history. Flipping out, that's where it all went wrong. Jesus Christ. Hang on a second. <laughs> Be careful. Right, well, I've just seen so somebody just like putting a little bit on. there. Yes. So just, just like go in and just blend them bits in just a little bit. Yeah, because I can just say I was a bit scared to do it with a big brush because I don't want to go over my, my homemade highlights because I don't like I don't want exactly. to bleach, you know. Yeah. So if you've got if you can get like a little brush like that, that'll be that will be quite useful for me. when we do the highlights. So you may just want to clean that when you finish doing what it is that you're doing with it. Yeah, okay. Unless you've got another small brush. Um, now, I with I... go on. Yeah. Uh, what do I do about here? Behind here. Now, if you don't want to do the back, if you don't feel like you need to do the back because you're not going to see it, I would leave it. There's been times yeah. that I've got clients in the salon if they don't have grey hair there and we're matching it to their natural colour. I don't put colour on it. There's no point in colouring something that doesn't need colouring. Okay. okay. So if you can... If you did want to blend it a little bit, then I would advise just do 
that crown area. So just do the two top triangles yeah. you know what? I think of them great, back sections. A great just tip see. because, I mean, if someone's that asked about the back of your head who you're living with, you're living with the wrong people. Exactly, exactly. So if it doesn't need colouring, don't colour it. If you do want to just make sure you get a bit of a blend, just cover the two top triangles in the back of the head. Yeah, and right. we'll I'm going to do it anyway. As the hair falls down, people will see it. But as you spend most of your time with your hair tied up, Dee, I wouldn't really be too concerned about it if I was you. So uh, what would I do? So if I were concerned, I'd just sort of paint in there. Yeah, and then just like you've been sectioning before, just keep drawing little lines and just separate that bit there. Now, if you leave the colour on for too long, it's not going to damage your hair and it's not going to go any darker. A bleach, however, will do the opposite. A bleach will go bleach. through light and it will eventually damage the condition of your hair. I wouldn't advise okay, so, for too long. So that's what I want to talk about now. So, hang on. Yeah. Because there's loads of people. <laughs> I look mental. Oh my God. Right, she says on. with a raging six pack sticking out from underneath her. That's thing just and sad. It's going to be mental anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie this here. <laughs> Someone's cross addicted to the gym. Mm. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Tie that back. Now then. Yes. So I went, <coughs> I went out. I'm a big fan of the stronger the better. And I bought 111 and 110. So 111, again, that's going to help you to get that slightly more cleaner, lighter blonde colour because it's got that ash element to it. Um, I'm covered. I'm covered in it. Anyway, right. So, and do you know why that is? You don't have gloves on, Davinia. No, I don't. I'm sick of freaking <laughs> plastic gloves. I need to go trying to pay with my credit card with plastic gloves on in a panic. I know. And it's like really scary Spanish security looking at me because <laughs> I've not got a mask on because everyone here has one and we can't find them. Oh no, my God, I feel like I've just robbed a bank. I know, it's crazy. It's mental over here. What's it like Absolutely. in South Africa? What's, what's the vibe? It's crazy. Everything you touch, you have to sanitise your hands. You've got people following you around the supermarkets with, like, hand sanitizers and wipes. And you have to wipe your trolleys down before you use them. You've got to sanitise your hands. You've got to yeah. people walking anywhere near you. Perfect. Perfect. Right, OK. Well, out of South Africa for you, back to the homeland. Okay, so I've got one and two here. Just mix them up right. the same, yeah? Yeah, so what you've got there, before you start, Davinia, what you have there is actually a tint. That's not okay. a bleach. So oh. a bleach, you'll find, generally, will come in a powder form with yeah. the developer, yeah? That's more of what we would essentially call a high lift blonde. Because you're only doing it along your front hairline, where the hair is naturally finer and naturally yeah. lighter, because it sees so much sun, don't mix it all if you don't need it. Oh, I've done it now. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. Through the front hairline, your hair is naturally lighter and it's naturally finer. So a high lift tint, you will find, will be enough for what it is that you're wanting to do. A bleach, however, if you are wanting to go through your highlights, which I'll touch on in a little bit, if you are wanting to go through your highlights, I would definitely advise you to use a bleach, not a high lift tint, because a high lift tint only has a certain level of lift capability. Once it reaches that level, it will stop. Whereas a bleach, you can get past that little bit more and that little bit higher. So, and with bleach, I mean, I use bleach all the time. I normally like. Because I have peroxide in my house anyway to yep. like clean my teeth with and everything. I just get a little. I bit saw of that fire. yesterday. That's such a good idea. I'm doing well, it myself. I get home. It I'm works. Doing it and I get you know home. what? I've been doing it. My teeth are pretty strong, apart from when I was pregnant with number three and I lost the back tooth. Yeah. But I've never had. I've had sensitive teeth when I had them done professionally when I was like yeah. 21 or something. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I was like this, and yeah. bro, it was absolutely so. It's so easy to do that once a month. Just yeah. And it's so Craig, if you're watching, you really need to go and get some hydrogen peroxide. Right. So I was just okay. I was just telling Craig if he's home he needs to go and get me some hydrogen peroxide for when I get home. Immediately, chop chop. Immediately. We've got baking soda. Just go and get the yeah. peroxide. Right. Okay, so now then. So I'm just gonna use so this, this little just for men brush. The hair that back. you've just coloured. Yeah. Move that right back. So 
So put that, tie that to the, in the back of your head. So all of this top hair, you can use a comb if you want to. It won't just to sort of pull it back because that'll actually so help to blend good. it a little bit as well. Perfect. How's that? Yeah. Is that a better light? If I move there, is that better? That is better light, actually. Sorry. Right, let me put no, it on no, the back. Fine. Come. If, if, if the foam falls off, hang on, I know what I'll do. I'll put it on this table. One sec. I've got and a lot of pencils holding my phone. Can you, can you see it? Yes. Perfect. Right. Yeah. What you're going to want to do here is, again, don't work in too, too thick a section. Right. So what you've got there, where your hair naturally, and everybody does it, where your hair naturally comes to a bit of a point at the front. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Separate them into a natural parting. Yep. Yeah. And then I would probably say, let me just have a qu quick look at you. Come right up close. Right. Split them in half now. So half the thickness of them. What, like horizontal? Half, the, th half the depth, sorry, yes. Uh, okay. Come across your hairline like that. How's tiny, that? tiny little bit more. Hang on. Let me get, the, let me get another mirror. Flipping it. It's like splitting the atom, this, isn't it? Literally like splitting hairs. Friggin' um poor sod. When all this is over, you need to come and see me and I'll get this fixed for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I can see like grey hair here. Yep. So, so what you're gonna do now with your just for men brush. Yeah. Just Put a, you only want a little bit of tin on on this brush, yeah? Okay. We're going slightly different now to what we did with the roots. Okay. Don't go too crazy with it. So? So literally just dip it in. Perfect. And it, you can always put more on, yeah? But once it's on there, you can't remove it. Okay, now, so. look at me first before you start doing this. I need to, I want to actually demonstrate to you. So you're so an eye do With... With the teeth of, so as you imagine, so your brush is like that, yeah? Yeah. Turn the brush on a vertical. And what oh, you're going to do is you're just going to brush. Straps. Yes, just, and you're just going to go down the hair like that. Try and get as close to the root as you can. Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So if somebody's doing this at home, my advice would be to put, um, cotton wool strips in between each of the sections once you've done it and that'll stop the colour from bleeding into each other so you don't get really heavy orange lines and things like that. Okay, I've got some there. Hang on. The, actually, this Just For Men brush is Bab, isn't it? genius. I'm, I'm going to go and get one in a minute because I'm going to do this. More That's essential good. shopping. More essential. Well, I'm not allowed to buy anything. Imagine what were you doing 20 years for? Just for well, me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I won't go. Oh, this. gosh. I'm not enough yet. Yeah, so oh, you want to go all the way around that front hairline. Just okay. slightly brushing it on and just teasing the colour in. You do need to do what you've sectioned out as well, so on that other side. But just go through and just keep on slightly applying it. If you are, whilst you're doing that, if you are going to be doing your highlights and you are, you know, you're somebody that normally gets a full head of highlights or you get a, um, a half head or a hairline and parting, if you can get by, I know it's not going to be easy to, if you can get by, then please try and do, because highlights are a lot harder to get right on yourself than what, um, than what a tint is. Um, don't go and put a blonde tint on your roots just because you have highlights. It's a very different look. It won't blend. It will take a lot of correcting once all of this is over with. If you're going to do it, just like Davinia has been doing with her parting when she was applying the roots, what you're gonna do is section it into a middle parting, just work 
draw a line in there and section your hair out. So you have an, sorry, my hair's not long enough to do this, but Joe, I have a model that I'm going to use whilst Davinia is here. Joe, just can you take a seat for me for a second? She's even blow dried her hair today for this particular reason. <laughs> oh, so perfect. You... This is like this morning. Oh my God, you've got I know, isn't it? This is one I prepared earlier, Davinia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile. Yeah. Spot so the professional salon. So if we can just pop our head right down. Sorry, I know this, the lighting isn't marvellous here. But, so you're going to have your hair in a section here. What you're going to do is just work with really fine sections like this. And just like Davinia is doing here, you're just going to pin the really fine stripes into the head. I hate using the word stripes. Think of it more as a highlight than a stripe. But you're just going to really softly paint some colour onto the root. Don't cover all of that hair, otherwise it's going to look too blocky. Yeah, it's a highlight for a reason. There does need to be a difference and a contrast in the colour. Each time you do that, what you do is actually, sorry, you should work in a section like this first and gradually do section by section, yeah? Each time you do that, put a piece of cotton wool underneath it and that will stop the colour from bleeding onto each other so you get more of a, more of a, you get a better coverage and not too much of a bleed. Thank you, Joe, darling. You can, you can go down. Thank you. Um, with regards to bleaching kits, bleach is bleach when it comes yeah. to, um, when it comes to home colouring. It will all do exactly the same thing. It will just keep on lifting and keep on lifting and keep on lifting. You will find that the majority of bleaching kits that you can buy at home, that you can buy in the supermarket, come with a level what we call 30 volume. Now, I wouldn't advise you put 30 volume on your scalp. It, it can be quite harsh um, and it can really sting. So it's the, the 30 volume will help with highlights because you're doing it in more of an open air environment. It will keep it to lift. Normally, we wouldn't use that stronger colour as hairdressers, but we do enclose the colour in foil, so the heat of that foil helps with the development. But just be careful. Don't try and do too much. Just really try and soften off that front hairline, just like you're doing now, without trying to get too carried away. Just don't be adventurous. Um, don't suddenly it's think... Very it's very into very yeah, Sorry. you, I would probably say that you're about ready to stop. You just need to finish that, that bit, exactly, I was just about to say that bit there. Um, one thing we've not done with Davinia, which is a really, really, really good idea, but the reason why I've not done it... <laughs> More like a gremlin or a fraggle. <laughs> One thing we've not done with Davinia is we've not put any barrier cream on her hairline. The reason for that is because we weren't putting a darker colour on her hairline. If you don't, so, tell, like, you while, while this is taking, um, tell, tell me what, what little handy tricks of the trade can people do while I'm trying to get this colour off my hands? Yep, what people so, can do once I'm at home. So, start off with, you're not going to get it on your hands, wear gloves. Um, <laughs> If <laughs> my nails. Oh my god, everywhere. Um, if you've got you are gonna be doing it at home, any sort of cream would work as a good barrier cream. So hand cream, foot cream, pseudo cream, um, body moisturizer, anything like that. Just go around and just put quite a liberal amount of cream just all the way around your hairline. That's because if you do get any onto your skin, it acts as a barrier and it'll stop it from developing. Does that come off? It came, came off. I didn't even read the instructions because I can't read Spanish, but it because smells you, nice. So because you've got it soon enough, it will come off. Yeah? So don't so then walk really around and leave tint all over your hands. So just get up straight away. If you use barrier cream, you don't necessarily need a tint remover because the, the cream will stop you, stop it from developing on your skin around your front hairline. So if you use gloves and use any sort of moisturising cream or anything like that, you will find that you'll be all right. Um, and you shouldn't have to worry too much about it getting all over the place. Um, but if you don't, any sort of skin toner. So if we, uh, ladies, if you've got like your toning agents, that you put on your skin once you've cleansed and moisturised. No, before you moisturise, sorry, that's really good at removing um, tint. Another good one is nail varnish remover. I know it's full of acetone and it may not smell very nice, but it is really good at removing tint from the skin as well, should, um, should you get some. So if you have any of them, like, 
especially the nail varnish pads, you know, the ones that you use, to, yeah. the ones that are already made up. So one of them would be really good at being able to get away, get it off. I would definitely advise moisturising your skin afterwards because um, it, it may dry it out a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm putting this in this little thing here to try and soak my nails. My nails are just yeah. flipping. Oh, someone's put yeah. fillet bang. Silly bang. Bang. <laughs> You've got silly bang. I'm not sure how much nails you'd have left by the end of it. But, uh, yeah, but they'd be dead clean. Yeah. Um, it is a bit of a bugger when it gets into your nails, though. Craig hates me when I come home from work because I never wear gloves. And I always have. This is probably the cleanest, the most natural look in my hands have been for a very long time because I've been nailing Do you know what? No you could actually do. You could do, like, one-to-ones. You could get some of your clients to call you up and just say, because... If you, I mean, yes. our lockdown's been extended here till uh, April 26. Yeah. There's a lot of regrowth there, babe. Well, this is it, and you know, we're, we're the same. And there's a lot of selfies going on, and there's a lot of... There will be. ...and everyone wants to look like living their best life. Exactly. If we just do the front bit. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, and it is just to do the bit that people, just to be able to tie you over. Um, all of my guests know how to get hold of me. If you do need any advice, please, I would rather that you asked me instead of just going and trying and doing it yourself. Um, obviously, I know what your colour is on your head, so I'm going to be able to help that's you more so true. Than, what some, than you, somebody in Sainsbury's that doesn't know what he's talking about that just pulls off a random box off the shelf, yeah? If yeah. you are stuck... You all know the, the social media channels. You all know my, the salon's email address. We're on Facebook, we are on Instagram. Anybody that needs any advice, please don't hesitate not to ask me, um, especially with my clients, because, because I know what's on your head. Yeah, I know what, what's going to be one of the best. Don't you dare come back with a henna, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no one's... No one's... I mean, Do you know, not put a henna on your touches. hair. <laughs> you um, babes. Yeah, <laughs> that works actually. My nails are clean again. They Perfect. were black. That actually worked. I suppose it's just do it as soon as possible, isn't it? Before the colour takes. Yes. Yeah, the, and that is that's the trick. You get it off as soon as possible because the longer it's on there, the more it's going to embed itself into your skin, and then the longer it's going to take to get off. So if you, as soon as you're finished, give your hands a really, really good wash. Um, use any sort of remover or toner or anything like that and it will just really help just to really cleanse that tint off. If you do get it on there, it's only going to last a few hours anyway and it will come off. Um, would Go the on. peroxide lift it off a bit? A bit of peroxide, a bit of baking soda, would that lift it off? Possibly with the peroxide and baking soda, yeah, because that will help to cleanse, cleanse it um, a little bit more because it'll be that look, as it's, it will do the same to your fingers as what it's doing to your teeth. So... It, it just helps, just, it gives it that little bit more, uh, that little bit more. Seriously, it's the, most, it's the handiest ingredient I've got. I mean, I've, I've got some here, look. It's always in my bathroom. Look, massive baking powder there, and then agua oxygenada. There you go. My, that was very funny. Well, well done. Well done. <laughs> Craig, quick one. What about on. those colour shampoos? So, so if somebody's like, because I've been blonde and brunette and everything, but yeah. I always, I always gravitate to blonde. But I've always, I, I always used to be like a white blonde, and because I've got mm -hmm. a lot of red in my veins, I used yeah. to bleach my hair. Then I put a toner over the top. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. then, um, what about those purple shampoos and everything? Yep, they do work. They do work, and they are actually really effective for what they do. You've got some out there that are better than others. Um, the only thing I would definitely, definitely, definitely advise, I'll go through some ranges in a second, but the one thing I would definitely advise is do not use it as your everyday shampoo and conditioner. It's, it, will dry, it will dry your hair out completely. There is zero moisturising element to that shampoo and conditioner. There's nothing treatment-based with it. There's nothing prescriptive to it. It is designed to colour your hair. It is, for all sense and purposes, another form of a colour. It's what we call a temporary colour. Yeah, so okay. it will, it's designed to do a job, and that job is to colour your hair. So if you are somebody that is using it, especially a purple shampoo, um, use it by all means, but I would probably say use it once a week. So if you're somebody that's shampooing your hair, say, three times a week, only do it once. Um, the conditioners generally tend to be stronger just because of the way that a conditioner works. It pushes the colour into the hair better. Um, so the conditioner side of it generally tends to be more effective than what the shampoo side is. Um, but 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there. Evader, do an amazing one, an amazing um, purple shampoo and conditioner. Um, the blue Malva, it is fantastic. It's slightly softer. It smells really nice as well, doesn't it? it smells like smells a, beautiful. Like the it actually smells like in the eighties used to. It's got that. It smells like plum and violets almost. It's a gorgeous, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so that's Evader, and they, they're that, big on it. That's the Evader ones. What so about they do them some in the cheaper ones because I know Evader probably um, isn't open at the moment. Yeah, no, I get that. I do get that. So. You can find one um, that Jen actually still has left in my bathroom. Um, it's that Osis one that people might see. It's in a silver bottle with black label on it and silver writing. It's O-S-I-S. -S. That can generally be found quite largely in most supermarkets, um, most hair and beauty places. Um, write that down. Go and have a look. It is really good. The only one, I'd never slate a brand, but the only one I would ever say to people to be careful with is the fudge one. It is very, very strong. Very strong. Oh. And the fudge one. It's good, but it's very strong. And if you're not careful with it, you are in danger of you walking out of the bathroom with bright purple hair first go around. So it's, you've just got to be quite careful. Right, yeah, you've so got to remember what you want. How do you think we're getting on with this? How do you know when the colour's taken? I didn't even check. Right, so really, you need to... You should have set a timer by now, but I'm too busy talking, I forgot to tell you. Uh, well, I mean, you started at about, what, 10 past? No, you, you know, I would... I would so... I would say, no, you set a timer once you finish the application. So I'd say you okay. finished the application about 10 minutes ago. Yeah. So I would say... Um, with the highlights, they do need to have that little bit longer. So the highlights, you're probably going to need to leave that for about 40 minutes now. Oh, right. Just to get, just to get maximum lift out of it. I can't help the it. I'm putting some more on. I can't, I just can't help it. I just can't help it. <laughs> I can't, can't stop cutting. The, the darker tint that you've put on, once it's reached the level it's designed to reach, it will stop. So you don't need to worry too much about that going any darker. It may deposit a little bit excess tone, but that will wash off after a right. few washes. It will eventually go to the you want it to be. But for you at the minute, your main concern is the highlights. We need to get them as light as what we can um, before you before you rinse it. Otherwise, it's going to be a little bit orange in comparison, and we don't want that. Um, some other alternatives for people as well, if they are nervous about doing this, because I do understand it's not, it's not ideal for everybody. Not everybody does want to be doing this. Um, there no. are, other, no, there are other alternatives out there for people. Um, so a product that I've worked with for quite a few years that I really, 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 really do I advise people to use. It's called Colour Wow. Davinia, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but it's, it's, it almost looks like an eyeshadow. So what you do wow. is, so it's, again, it's a temporary colour. So they do loads of different shades. There's, loads, there's quite a large selection of shades that you can choose from. And you paint it onto your roots like you would do eyeshadow on your eyes. Now that will stay on there up until you wash your hair. So once you wash your hair, it'll come off. But because it's an eyeshadow, you'll get as long lasting out of it as what, as you know, you do from yourself being a woman. You know how long an eyeshadow lasts. So these do really, 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 really work. They're not the cheapest of things in the world, but they're not ridiculously expensive. I think they're only probably about £20 a, a thing, but it will last you forever. And it's also a really good alternative in between your regular appointments, because we all know that last week before we go to the hairdresser, we it's all want to... Yeah, it's a giveaway, we just can't justify going. And you always have a special event that happens in that week before you're due to go to the hairdressers. So Colour Wow is a really, really, really good alternative um, to be able to use on your roots. Have a look on the website. And we are actually going to be starting to stock them in the salon when I get back. It is one of the things that we've been looking at getting into the salon as well. It's just a really oh. good alternative in between, this, in between these sort of things. Baptiste do quite a few good um, spray-on ones. If you're going to use a spray on one, just be careful you don't go too close to the root because then it can make it a bit sticky. So I always hold it a good sort of 10 centimetres away from the head so you don't, it doesn't end up going too sticky in your hair and on your roots as well. Um, but I know, like I said, I know everybody doesn't necessarily want to be doing this. I get it. Um, but there are other alternatives out there should, should anybody want to go and have a look for them. Well, well. quickly, just because you've got five, four minutes and Instagram just switches off there. Four minutes. So, um, 
quickly treatments, homemade treatments that people can do, or treatments that you'd recommend and just like getting delivered like in the next sort of couple of two weeks to make the most of it, particularly split yep. ends, that sort of so, thing? Yeah, so I would, um, for anybody that needs, things that people are going to want to sort of be able to access from the shop, obviously I understand that we can't go to the salon and buy them. A Veda is, is available online. You can order it online. The Damage Remedy Treatment, um, they've just released a new brand called the Nutriplenish, which is absolutely beautiful. Very moisturising, but super, super, super lightweight. So it won't wear the hair down. They have a beautiful oil with the Nutriplenish and with the Dry Remedy range. And they have a split end repair. If you're wanting to get something from a more local source, um, really anything Weller-based out of a supermarket, Weller or L'Oreal, the one thing I would advise to stay away from is the Aussie. It's, it kills the hair. Please do not use Aussie shampoo and conditioner on your hair. It oh my is God, not... I remember that. It smells like bubblegum, doesn't it? Oh my God, I hate the smell. And I can't even <laughs> smell it anymore, but I hate the smell. Um, but it's really, really, really not very good for the hair at all. So please stay away from it. Um, stay away from Aussie. Look for Weller. How about look for Weller or L'Oreal? Can you just like put, you know, like the usual avocado mask? Just while you know. Yeah. While, so while, if you want to go, if you want to go natural, if you want to go natural, raw eggs, avocados, crushed up avocados, a little bit of coconut oil, um, any superfood. Any superfood does exactly to your hair, to your skin and hair, is what it does to the inside of your body. What, like yeah? bone broth? Are we there? Yes, <laughs> just yeah. dunk your head in bone broth. Like you were just going, oh <laughs> my God. But yeah, but any, any sort of superfood, so avocados, coconut oil, um, I, what was the other one that eggs. you just said? Eggs. Eggs, raw eggs, um, and it, full of protein, you see. So anything you can get that is, is good for your inside, generally will be good for your outside as well, on a, or, but only on a temporary measure. It's not, I don't advise we all start shampooing our hair and eggs, because we may smell, but just get a little bit on the ends, just to fill that with some protein to the ends, we'll be fine. Whisk it up, it'll be fine. Just don't leave it maybe on the you can do, Maybe you can do a post and I'll link to it, like with, with some natural yeah. ideas. We'll just go because, through some, you know, I'll do we've some. Got, we've probably got loads of stuff in the, um, in the kitchen. Like, I will have loads of stuff. We've got an avocado and it's just about to go off. Chew I've got one the there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Get it. So listen, we're probably, I'm going to, Okay. Call me back in about 35 minutes and we'll have a look at you. Okay. okay. All right, darling, we'll perfect. Just mention minutes. the name of your salon again and where you are, just so people know. Yep, so it's Stonehouse you. Salon and Spa. Uh, Stonehouse Salon and Spa, we're based in Wigan. Um, we've been open for just over three, it was coming up for three years now in Wigan. Wigwam Bam. Wig Wam Bam. Um, anybody that is local, please come by and see us um, when we get to reopen again. Um, but if they need any more advice, just come and find You're me. I'm sure I can help. But, yeah, but we'll be back in 35 minutes. Right, let's have a look right. at you. So, what do you think? Looks fab. Where it's we nice, are, it's yeah. quite a nice blonde. The highlights have lifted it? nicely. You yeah, have missed not... a little bit there, though, Davinia. And you've missed, you see, there. Here. Yeah, where your fingers were, you've missed a little bit there. There. Yeah. And I think you've got a little bit on the other side as well. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just there, yeah. But I can um, tweak that later when it's dry, can't I? Oh, no, I mean, you've missed washing it. You've left some tin okay. on. Oh, I've not even started washing <laughs> it yet. Right. So, I've not washed it yet. No, I've not. Oh, no, ah, right, right, sorry. Right, right so, so I'm yeah, going to wash it off. Just, you one second before you do. Just one second before you do. Where's your where's the most prominent grey part of your hair? Right, so there. just separate it there for me. And then use the back end of that just for men brush and just scrape it off the root a little bit. Yeah, there's no grey. Let me let me have a look. Right up to the camera. Up, up, lift your head. There we go. Perfect. So Can what you you're looking for yeah. there is if you get any sort of translucent coverage, it needs to stay on a little bit longer. All right, but that looks like it's covered it quite nicely. I think so, considering. 
I've never yeah. done this before. I've never done my own roots before, ever. I've done my own highlights, as you'd watch and probably yeah. cringe. Yeah, exactly. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash it off. So if you want to chat about... Um, yeah, because I've got, I've got a few more time. questions here that... I've got a few more questions here that I didn't get around to answering. So whilst you're doing that, I'm going to try and go through everything else that we need to. Um, right, so some of the things that I managed to have a look at when, um, whilst we were pausing, I did go back to, um, I noticed somebody asked me about a 12-1 and a 12-11. Um, they're both, that's from a Weller range. They're both very much ash blonde colours. Um, so, they, again, they're not a bleach. They are, they're a highlight. They're like a, a, a tint colour as well. They are our highest lift blonde. You generally find that you won't necessarily find them as much within a supermarket. They are more, um, they are more like a professional brand. Um, I've just seen somebody now ask actually what it was that we were using because they've only just signed, they've only just logged on. Um, we've used a 6.7 with Davina, with Davina, which is essentially a, what they class as a dark blonde, but it's very much a brunette. So it's more like a light, uh, one of the lightest brunettes that we can use with a slightly more natural, um, I say chestnut, but it's just more of a natural warmth coming in through the colour. Um, and then we've just used a really soft highlighting colour just in through them front bits. Um, just to make sure that we get that lift in there. Um, two shampoos, yeah? Had two shampoos. That's just to make sure that you get all of the colour out of there. Um, the first the first shampoo will be to get the colour out. The second shampoo will be to cleanse the hair. Um, somebody asked a question about sensitive scalp, what sort of colours they can use on there. Um, I would always recommend that you do a patch test regardless with, with, with whatever colour that you're going to use. Always just mix up a tiny little bit of it first. Mix a little bit, just pop it in just behind your ear and leave that for a few hours. If you do get any sort of irritation or anything like that, then I do really recommend not to, um, not to use it. Um, more natural products are better. So if you can find any ranges that are more sort of natural based, they would be better. The main thing that people are allergic to when they are colouring their hair is a product that we call PPD. Um, don't ask me what that stands for because I don't actually know. Um, but it's, it's essentially what it is that gives the hair the colour. Um, and that is the more, that's what generally people are more sensitive. The darker the colour, the more concentration of PPD is within the product. So that's what it is that you're testing for um, when you have it, when, you do, when you're testing on sensitive scalps. Um, I've just seen somebody then ask about stripping your hair colour. I'd really only advise letting a professional strip your hair colour. Um, it's, it's really not that easy. Um, it's not as simple as tint won't lift tint. And that's something that you really need to remember. So you put in a, a, a lighter colour onto dark hair just by your tint, it's not going to lift it. All it's going to do is give you a very different colour on your roots, but you're still going to be dark on the ends. Don't try and strip your own hair colour. Please, please, please go to a hairdresser and, and ask them. To do it um just because it's not it, it, it can be very temperamental we don't know what we're going to lift out we don't know what we're going to be exposed to once we started stripping it um some of the other questions that was that i've been asked which isn't um which isn't which doesn't fall within hair coloring but obviously ladies i know we've all got fringes and i know that a lot of you are going to be struggling you're going to look like cheap dogs by the time it's finished because it's going to be so long a few little tips with cutting your fringe. One, don't do it dry. Your hair will jump. When it, uh, don't do it wet, sorry. Always do it dry. Your, your, your hair will jump when it dries. So when you cut your hair when it's wet, you release it and dry it, it will end up a few inches shorter. Do not cut it wet. Okay. Always it's like a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it looks like we've got a bowl around our heads and we don't want that one. Um... When you're going to do it, if you've got anything other than kitchen scissors, I would advise that you use kitchen scissors. What you're going to do, now I have come prepared for this because a hairdresser is never too far away from their actual tools. And bizarrely, I did bring mine to South Africa with me. So I can give you a little bit of demonstration. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your fringe. Now what you need to do is you need to make sure that you separate your fringe out. In the, in the shape that it is. So when a fringe is cut, it's normally cut on a triangle type shape here. 
So section all of the rest of the hair back. I know I don't have any hair to fill mine. You'll have to apologise for that. I'll have to apologise for that. But it would normally come in a bit of a triangle shape like this. Section all of the rest of the hair back. What you're going to do is take your hair between your forefinger and your middle finger. Only hold it very, very gently and push it down longer than what you want your fringe to be. Like I said, remember, this will jump. Yeah, so people think that they, they're they going to cut it to the length and then they'll let go and it ends up up here. So pull it longer than what you want it to be. And you're going to point cut. So don't go in straight. Don't cut a really straight heavy line. You're just going to point cut just really gently along that line. Yeah, when you let go, it will jump up. The golden rule with fringes, less is more. You can always cut some more off, but you most certainly can't put it back on once you're done. Once you've done that middle section, split the fringe in two, hold on to this half and pull it into the middle on a bit of a line, on a bit of a diagonal like this. And then you're just going to take off. You'll find you've got a corner here. And just take that corner off and that'll blend with the middle part. And that's going to help to just bow it round just a little bit. If you want it a little bit more straighter, don't pull it on quite so much of an angle. But if you cut it straight, it will lift up that way. Yeah? <laughs> you always, cut on, always cut it on a slight angle so that when you release it and that hair travels from here back to here, it will fall straight. Yeah? So try not to take too much off, but less is definitely more. So do it, do it quite carefully. Um, I've seen people say that you should put a line of sellotape on your hair and cut underneath the sellotape. I don't recommend that because by the time you pull that piece of sellotape off your hair, you're going to be left with quite a few less hairs in your fringe. It's going to be a bit of a painful experience trying to get that off. So really don't use sellotape on your hair when you're trying to do it. Just be quite careful. Keep your fingers straight and do it longer than what you want it to be because you've got to allow for it to jump up. Um... Another one I've been asked um, is regards to clippering. Obviously, everybody, and I know Divinity, your boys. Awesome. Your boys <laughs> so I know your boys, obviously, are probably going to be ready for their hair to be cut soon. The look, um, the I'm look as well. <laughs> um, the trick to remember with clippering is we need to keep a natural, as natural a shape in the head as possible, yeah? So when, imagine that this is the side, of, well, I've got, I've got a side of the head here. Imagine that this is the clipper blade, yeah? You want to keep it going vertically up to the head. So you naturally come away from the head, yeah? Work in straight lines, straight lines. Don't follow the shape of the head. <laughs> as soon as you follow the shape of the head and you take all of that off, that is what we're left with. An egg. Yeah? An egg. We don't want to look like pineapples by the time we've all come out of isolation. Yeah? Come straight up from the head and the hair will naturally just drop out when it doesn't need to be cut. Clipper blades come in very many different lengths. The longest one normally is a number eight. The shortest one, obviously, is a bare blade. Um, please, 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 please don't try and do fades. It takes a very long time for a hairdresser to be able to get a fade right. I don't expect mums or someone being able to do it themselves. I was going to try it Do not try a fade. Just do a single blade so that you can get it so you can blend it better, yeah? If you want to keep length on it, start with a higher number and work your way down with them numbers until you get to the level, until you get to the length that you want it to be. Craig Harris, you are not trying it. I, you will be in a lot of trouble if I come home and you attempt to cut your own hair. Oh, please um, do, Craig, I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, so try where possible um, not to don't, don't follow the natural curve of the head, which is what a lot of people want to do, and then you lose the shape of it. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this. I'll, I'll yep. leave you for two minutes while I go outside because I don't want the sound to disrupt you. Okay. Just, yep. No, that's fine. Two seconds. That's straight. fine. Um, so a few other things that I've seen people asking again, just reiterating on the colour side of things. Um, the number before the point or before the slash is how dark you want the colour to be. Um, the number afterwards will depend on what the tone of the colour you want it to be. So again, 
10 would be your lightest, one would be your black. Um, the tones after one would be your ash. Um, just seeing, is it Maria Maria dish? You want a good ash blonde for your roots? The thing is, it completely depends on what your natural colour is. So depending on how dark you are naturally, the high lift blondes, they can only have a certain level of lift that they will allow to be able to get to. If you're anything darker than a level six, then I wouldn't advise you use a high lift blonde um, to to use on, on, the, on it because it will just end up going too yellow. So anything, if you're naturally darker than a six, don't use anything other than, you'd have to use a bleach, but then you, you, it's dangerous territory then, um, trying to get into there. Um, so if you were sort of like a seven or an eight, sort of like a relatively light, very light brown or quite a dark blonde, um, anything for the 12, a 12, one, a 12, 11, a 12, eight, nine, anything like that would be quite a good ash blonde color um, to use in there. Possibly even a 10. If you're only, if you're not that dark, naturally, a 10 one will be quite a good color for you to work with. Um, someone just asked there about a chocolate brown. Um, Similar, very similar colour to what we've just used on Davinia, actually. Uh, any of the chestnut type colours, keep and make sure that they're quite a dark colour. So something like a five, seven or a six, seven would be quite a nice chocolate based colour. Um, that should give you quite a good, a good coverage on the greys as well. Again, if you do find that you are quite stubborn with your greys and they don't cover very well, um, just double apply that colour um onto your roots once you've finished if you've got any left over just put it in the most um stubborn areas and you should find that you will get that little bit more of a coverage on there um it's so someone fiona has just asked if your hair loses the shine and um, it does so as you get a little as we get a little bit older um we move a little bit more forward within our life um we do tend to lose the shines in our hair a little bit more. Um, Colouring can, it can en enhance it, but if you over-colour the hair, then it can also make it dark. It can make it a little bit more duller. A trick there, please don't, don't over-develop your roots. Um, don't over-develop the ends of your hair as well. So if it's literally only the roots that need doing, don't take it through to your ends every time. Because all you're going to do then is achieve a little bit of a build-up on your hair, which is going to make it go quite dull. And it, you're going to lose that shine um, coming through there. Um, right. So Go on, you there? Fabulous. Look at you. Tim and Tegan. <laughs> well done, look. Okay, I'll tell you what mistakes I've made. Um, Go on. I think I needed a bit more uh, blonde here. Okay. And I think I actually do need maybe a couple more. I need to go over some of these highlights here just to, to get give myself more blonde. But otherwise, so, all of the grey is covered. And it's a fab coverage. It looks really, it blended I really well. The colour really worked with my own, the, the yeah. colour I already had on. So, so if what, you'd I'm gone with the other box, if you'd gone with the 7, the 7.7, .7, that would be a lot warmer. It would look a lot redder. Would it? Okay, so we'll just yeah. ask again what I use. So here it is. I use this one, but it's the colour that's the six important. 6.7. 7. Yeah, so 7 you want, it's the 6.7. Regardless of the brand, regardless of everything else, the colours are always the same. They're a universal colour that we as hairdressers work by. So the first number is the six. That's the dark blonde, which is actually a brunette in, this, in reality. The seven is the chestnut colour, which is more like a chocolate type based tone, which just gives you that richness. Um, but like I said, the colours are all quite universal. It's blended lovely with your colour. It, it does look really, 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 really good. Um, the only thing I would say, Davinia, if you are wanting to lift where you've got colour, so where you've got the darker colour, you would need to use a bleach. You can't use a tint. A tint won't work. And I said this earlier, tint doesn't lift tint. So you can't just put a lighter tint on top of already coloured hair and expect it to go lighter, it won't do it. The only way you can get lighter on pre treated hair is to bleach it. Okay. I mean I'm yeah. a fan of bleach anyway. I know where I am with it bleach because it just keeps lifting, doesn't it? Yeah, what, exactly. What would you put on before because I, I put it's not Olaplex, it's something else I put on before I bleach it like for, for like two weeks I'll I'll no I'll have two Oh, what's it called? I think Rev is it Revlon that do it? It's like a pre lift up. Yeah, so 
any sort of if you if you are going to try and put your hair through that sort of strain treat it as much as possible as you can yeah so get, yeah get as many different treatments and things on you need to keep the hair as strong as possible because when it's about to go through something like that um, smart bond get... yes that's it smart bond that's what I, right, use. Okay. Before I use bleach. Yeah, so you can use use anything like that. Olaplex is a really good one. Um, Aveda, again, are about to actually, they're about to release their own version of Olaplex as well, which is also a really good product range, which I have used. So and you've got to say Olaplex in a Scouse accent. Olaplex. Olaplex. Um, but yeah, it's I... Olaplex, the smart blonde. So you, I put that on before because this this part of my hair is obviously it's like baby hair and it's really weak and I'm constantly yeah. going over it with highlights. So I I, I just pr prep my hair before I go with yeah. bleach. Um, so sorry, David. I'm just going to go through a few of these questions. Um, okay. Someone just asked me what my favourite shampoo and conditioner brand is. I am an Aveda stylist. I have been an Aveda stylist for about 12 years now. Um, if I am going to choose any, it is going to be that one. Where possible, always, 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 always try and use a professional brand on your hair, um, especially if you're going to colour it. Because what you've got to remember, if you're going to be colouring your hair and you're going to go to the hair salon, and you're going to spend all of this money on colouring your hair. If you're going to spend that much money on your colour, invest in the aftercare on it and use a professional range. Um, we don't just say this because we're hairdressers and we want to make money from it. The reality of it is we can't make your hair look the way that it does by using cheap brands the reason why you're, one of the main reasons why your hair looks so good when you leave the salon is because of the products that have been used on it yeah so if you're going home and then not doing the same thing you can't expect to achieve the same result yeah so for me personally my favorite range is aveda i've used it for years and years and years and i've just opened up my own aveda salon um i wouldn't use anything else so that for me is my my favorite brand but please do invest in your aftercare of your um, if you pull that, um, someone just said, What did I use on my highlights? And also, I want to point out, I've saved all this, um, to my stories. So, when you go and have a look at my stories, it'll have a ring around it and it'll say, um, yeah. you, you tap onto it as if you're going to see all those stories, you know, like what I yes. prat around and do in the day. At the, t at the bottom right hand corner, press live and you'll get the yeah. whole. The, the tinting and everything, and that's on for 24 hours. But what I'm going to do is, I've recorded it as well, and on Monday I'm going to set up a YouTube channel, and yeah. I'll put this there so you can keep going back to it whenever you want. There's something wrong yeah. with my Instagram account. I've, I've, I've forgotten my password, so I can't do a link to me. I'm Honestly, I'm so crap. But um, I, I, will, I will post my new YouTube channel, and all, all my sort of like um, hacks will be in there, including this one and the results. Um, what's good for dandruff? Um, dandruff, I've actually just had somebody message me via our Facebook channel about dandruff. Um, so Aveda do two really good, three really good ranges actually. We have a Parmesana range that you can use alongside your shampoo and conditioner. Um, we have one that's called Scalp Benefits, which, we, which helps to restore the balance, the natural pH balance in your scalp. Um, we also have one called Rosemary Mint, which is quite a good cleansing shampoo. That's quite good for people that suffer from oily scalps more than um, dandruff. If you are, if you are going to go and use a um, shop bar shampoo and conditioner, any hairdresser is going to kill me, but they will all agree with me on this one. Pantene is by far the best cheap shampoo and condition shampoo range to remove dandruff. Um, so okay, if you are, great. That's to go just down great that, to know. Yeah, if you are wanting to go down that route, there have been people that I've advised in my career that uh, suffer really badly from it, that I've, I have said that that is probably one of the better better ranges to go with if you are wanting something more shop-bought. Um, just seen somebody here, which kills me to say it, and all the hairdressers watching this will agree with me, but they wish I'd never said it. Um, I've just yeah, but do you know what? Sometimes you're worrying at unprecedented times. Everyone loves going to the hairdressers and having yeah. the opportunity. Do you know what? I'd, I'd rather... I've, I've built a career on... I've built my career, Davinia, on always being honest with people, and I, I, I'm not going to stand here. I'll always advise what I use, because I use it for a reason, but... At the same time, there are other things out there that we can use. So don't feel like you can't do it. I'd rather be honest than you followed my advice than going and trying and doing something that 
isn't going to work at all. Um, I've just seen somebody here ask, is Alterna Caviar good? It is. I have used it before in my career um, when I used to work in Primrose Hill. Uh, not Primrose Hill, sorry, up in um, just outside of Hampstead. Um, it is really good. I have used it. It is a good range. Um, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Cheap supermarket shampoo on your hair is fine for personal hair. Um, exactly. That is a very good point. Someone just put is if you're a cheap shampoo supermarket on your hair, it's like paying for personal training and going to drive in McDonald's on your way home. It, that is probably one of the best ways I can word it. Yeah. If you're going to do it, there was no point in putting all that work into it by ruining it the second you walk out of that door. Yeah. So there are other range. There are other professional ranges that aren't quite as expensive. But there are there are some you know that that are really easily sort of achieved. Um, and someone just put here Holland and Barrett hemp range is good for dry scalp. Never used it, but if it's working for you, maybe that could be something if people are suffering from um, dry scalps. Maybe go and have a look. I've never even thought to look in Holland and Barrett. Um, so maybe try that. Um, you can see I've not got any grey anymore. I had a good yeah. inch of regrowth. And it's yeah. fine. And even it is okay, isn't it? Yeah, just by and like I said, sometimes just by going down that little bit of past your past your crown, it does just help to blend it in. Um so just because if you are worried, especially with yours, it's not too bad because we weren't verging too far away from your natural colour. Yeah. But if you are doing if you are doing something that is quite different to your natural colour, then go up that little bit further past your crown area just so that when the wind blows it or anything like that, which the wind shouldn't blow it because none of you should be outside. But if the wind does out there again to blow it, um, then at least it does blend it in just that little bit more now. Um, but like I did see somebody asking, I will reiterate it again, please don't try and strip your own colour out. If you do want to strip your own hair colour, you, re you really, really, really need to go out and see a professional for that one because it is a really it might snap. It, it may snap, you could end up all sorts of different colours. Problem is when, you, when you're removing old hair colour, one, one of the old myths that people say is, I just want to remove this and my natural colour's left underneath it. It's not. When we put a hair colour on your hair, it covers, it, it, it takes over your natural pigment in the, in the hair. So when you put a bleach or any sort of stripping agent to be able to remove that colour, you don't just remove the, the coating of that pigment, you remove the whole pigment. So when you strip so it... it doesn't exist anymore, does it? It's gone. It's gone. So when you... Oh, forget about it. You're not going to go back to your natural colour. Exactly. Exactly. So you can't just strip a colour and expect to go back to what it was before. It just won't happen. Um, any other questions? Um, somebody just said that they, um, oh, thank you. Some of them just, somebody just said she was blonde, she went dark and she wants to go blonde again. Will she ruin it if she does it at home? Yes. Is the answer to that question. Um, yes. I've done that I ended up bright orange. Yeah. <laughs> Um, depending on how dark you've gone and depending on how many applications of the darker colour you've had put on there since being a blonde, it could be really easy to get back to what you want to be. Um, I would normally advise, I don't know how it used to look if you're having it done through highlights or anything like that before. If it was through, done through highlights, you'll find that just putting some more highlights back through there, you will naturally just start to get that lift out of it anyway. Um, maybe two applications of highlights would definitely get you back to where, somewhere close to where it is you wanted to be, depending on how dark you've gone and how many applications of the darker colour have been, have been put on um, there as well. Sunning? Thoughts on sunning? Oh, my God! No! 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 Do not put... <laughs> <laughs> it smells of my sun in on your hair. Oh! And then go and sit out in the sun for hours and you'd end up bright orange. Do you know I once I once had a friend that something said she put lemon juice on her scalp and then combed it down and then she just ended up with a bright orange hairline and brown ends. Don't do anything like that. It's not big, it's not clever. People will talk you about you for a very long time and not for a good reason. Don't use sun in. It's full of it's full of salts and minerals that react really badly with colour when we as hairdressers then go to put a professional product on your hair. Do not use sun in. It will snap your hair and it will damage it. Please don't do it. It's not good. It should have stayed in the 90s. It should have never have come back. It should just stay where it belongs. 
My mum my my used to when I was a little girl, because she was a hairdresser anyway, and of course I'd never want to go into her salon. So she'd just sneak in a bit of sun in on a brush and just comb it as she was drying my hair. The smell was like when I was seven. I mean, my oh mum was like gosh. another level of glamour. Oh, She's like, oh. you know, sugar yeah. in, but... I mean, yeah. so what I, what, right, so I'm going to be honest with Sorry, you. Sorry, Devin, you just want, what I'm do, so because I'm in the sun a bit and everyone else is, I will, there was, a lot, there was an old Helena Christensen hack. And so she used to get, when she, like, back in the 90s, she had all this beautiful sort of coppery gold sort of, like, shaggy hair. And when she mm -hmm. used to mix a little bit of vodka and lemon juice and just put it around there. I'll probably it's try that one, <laughs> so I'll let you know if it all falls out. I like the vodka and lemon. It's quite... It's quite <laughs> yeah, with tonic in a yeah. pint glass. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I've lost the ability to metabolise that. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, someone's just asked to you, Hayley has just asked, what would you use for um, dry snapped hair after a bad colour? Generally, that would be, cause, be because the hair has been damaged. I'm, I'm presuming that you're asking if your hair has maybe been highlighted or bleached. If that is the case, it needs protein going back into it. So any reparative range, anything that's strengthening. Um, again, Aveda, I know I keep plugging it, but it is my range. Aveda do a really good range called Damage Remedy, where we do, um, it's a reparative strength, restructuring and strengthening range um, that really just helps to get all of the protein and um, lipids back into the hair. Don't use anything moisturising. I know it sounds a bit silly, but if your hair's damaged, it needs protein putting back into it. If your hair is dry because of, heating it, straighteners, wands, anything like that, that needs moisture. If your hair is dry because it's been chemically processed, it needs to be strengthened, so it needs protein. The two very different things. Wow, well, I didn't know that at all, because I just thought that yeah. it kind of meant the same thing, it was just different marketing. Yeah, no, if... They'd make it more clear, shouldn't they? So, I mean, yes. that's the problem. Yeah. So, so moisture have, like, is... Moisture, like, because what yeah, I've got here, is very I've, just got, much heat. I've just got Jason's. The reason why I've got this is because um, of the kids, and it was just handy yeah. to have. It's just got no, like, you know, parabens and all that. But I just picked this up. Anyway, it says that terrible word, henna. But I don't think it's, it's not got henna. any colour in it. No, it's fine. You, do, you will find, don't get me wrong, you will find some shampoos and conditioners that do have Henry in it. Aveda have one, the Black Malva, which is the opposite to the Blue Malva. The Black Malva and the um, Madder Root, so they're tinted conditioners, they do have an element of Henry in it, but the actual Henry product, colouring product itself, is an absolute bugger to get rid of, and it will, it will completely damage no, your hair. Someone has just asked um, if they wanted hair like yours, what would they ask for um, when they went to the salons? So with Davina, you very much asking for something hair like... Back, like... Yeah, so you're asking for something like a balayage with Davina's. It's quite soft, it's quite natural. Um, balayage of an ombre, really, but tell them that you wanted the main lighting section to be focused more throughout the front of the hairline, um, with the rest of it being that little bit more natural and that little bit more darker. Um, and then they can just, if you do want a bit like Davinia's where she's got the ends of hers lifted, they can also just pop a few in through there. But you're looking at more like an ombre um, than a belly eye. Just for an ombre, they genuinely tend to be a lot more natural, a lot more softer results, um, where you can just blend some lighter pieces in there without it going too excessive and too light. Belly eyes is that kind of old dip dye thing that we look at where it goes from dark to light. Ombre generally tends to be a slightly more softer finish where it blends into it a little bit more so you can't really, you can see the colours but you can't work out where which one, which one is a much softer result. Um, so if you wanted something like Davinia, you are asking more for an ombre, a more, very subtle soft ombre. Um, My friend Jamie's just sex saying, can I get a balayage? Oh, shut up, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> He's a lost speak at the moment. The last thing you should be thinking about is a bloody balayage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Bloody hell. Um, um, okay, um, then. Well, listen. So carry on, carry on, carry on. I'm just. So it's just there. Someone just asked. Let, let, let me take this into my bedroom where I've got a charger. Hang on. That's I'm concerned. Fine. I'm going to lose you. That's fine. And someone just asked me. Out. If... I could check the housewife. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, someone just asked me if Olaplex is any good. It is. I do use it myself in the salon that I have. Um, again, I've used it for quite a few years. Um, I, do, I do believe in it. I have seen incredible results through people using it um, 
cons consistently. Um, but like I said earlier, Aveda have actually just started to release their own version of it. So if you do use any Aveda salons out there, please go out and have a look and check it out. Um, they, they are amazing brands, very natural products, um, really, really, really good for the hair. And they have just released something very similar to the Olaplex. So please, please do go and check that out as well. Um, Ray, can, can anybody, any of your clients um, order um, online with your salon any of the products? Is there any way of sort of like getting them out there? Out they, can't them? Go, they can't order them via our salon. We don't have a shopping section of our website as of yet. It's something that we are looking at doing. But you can order through Aveda. You know, Aveda do have a website. You can go on. You can have a look at the products that you want. Um, they've got a full range in there and they all come with a very detailed description of what each of them do, what the benefits are and who should be using them. Um, so if anybody does want to go and have a look at some Aveda products, please, please, please do go and, and you, have a look. Are you okay? Because you are obviously an Aveda flipping specialist. I mean, mm -hmm. how long have you been working with them now? About I've been with years? Aveda for 12 years now. Right, so. that's long enough. You know it inside yeah. out. So are yeah. people okay to DM you just to, to, to help navigate? Oh, because I didn't completely. know the difference between moisturising and yep. damaged and you know what I mean? I, yep, I, I, definitely. I, I, people, people have already asked me. I've already had a few questions in the interim bit. Um, if anybody's got any questions about any of Aveda products or anything like that, please just come and ask me. Um, give me a brief description of what your hair is, just so that I know what I'm working with. Um, and I will advise you as much as I can. I've, I've, like I said, I've been working with the brand now for, for years. And when I left London to move to Wigwam Bam, um, I, I, would not, I would not work with any other product range, which is why how we ended up opening up our own Aveda salon because there wasn't one in the area and I just, I, I just believe in it so much. So if anybody does have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, so you can find That's me That's great. And just, and just so everybody knows, you're not getting any kickbacks or anything like that. It's not like this is just because you're stuck in South Africa. Completely. And, you yeah. know, you may as well just help people out because it is a massive yeah. flipping minefield. And products aren't cheap. Professional ones They're not. are not cheap. They're not. And this is the thing, if you are going to go out and invest in products that aren't supermarket ones. You are better knowing what it is that you're doing. And obviously, at the minute, we can't go in and we can't ask a stylist because none of them are open. Um, so please, if you do need any advice, I am here. Um, and it's like I said in the earlier thing, what we're doing with Davinia here today, this is not something that I would say, right, this is what you need to start doing for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm not condoning hair colours, but I know if I sat here and told you all, don't do it, you wouldn't listen to me anyway. We don't know how long we're going to be in this situation for. We don't know what we're going to, what's going to be happening. So I just want to try and help you all as much as humanly possible to see you through this time and to make your hairdresser's life considerably easier when you do get back into the salon and you don't have about six different what lines the of colour coming out of the way <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's gone ad hoc. She's done it herself. Exactly. Oh my god! It's exactly. So you're just saving the world. You're saving the industry. So my takeaways from Try from it. this sort of Try like home highlights and color was basically um, to do the section. No, it was to have slightly greasy hair, so it wasn't yep. clean. That was number mm -hmm. one because the conditioner can block the color. Number one yep, was that. So then it was to oh. section it into quarters. Section then I discovered quarters, that I wasn't working, actually as... the hairline down to yeah. the back. Um, so yeah, then section I, into I realized quarters, I wasn't down as from the gray back from the underneath. Front, I'm not, I'm not, the I'm not gray under there. So just to focus on this bit, the crown, and also to get a teeny tiny brush for the tint. Yeah. Don't try and yeah. use the same brush um, Also as well, because what, what, I did, what I did mention, which actually is quite a good thing, for, if, they're not, if they're just doing a root colour and they're not doing the highlights like what you have, do the front hairline last. The reason right. for that is because naturally we are lighter and the hair is a lot finer on that front hairline. If you do the front hairline first, and then it takes you about 30 minutes to apply all of the roots. And then you're going to leave it to develop for another 35 minutes. Your front hairline could end up looking about two shades darker than the rest of it. So when you're doing your, root, when you're doing your roots, leave what you left out for your highlights. Leave that out yeah. anywhere. Do everything else. And your front hairline should be the very last thing you do. So it doesn't have quite... It only has the, des the designed... Um, Right. development time so it doesn't end up doubling because otherwise it will grab it too much and go too dark 
Really, it doesn't need colouring, don't colour it. It doesn't need colouring, don't colour it. So just colour what people can see, leave the rest of it until you go back to the salon. Oh, brilliant. That is just the best advice. So um, Craig's off to buy just for men. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's been threatened. He's really annoyed because I bleached my hair. He said, I'm having highlights in my hair. So I'm like, you, you go for it, darling. Oh, my I'm God. Gonna... I'd love to see that. Right, well then, so that's me, that's me done. So how long do you reckon this will last me then? Um, that should last you about six weeks now. Five to six weeks, I reckon. Perfect. Which hopefully all this will be over and we, we can go back to some sort of normality. And I can but come back to Wigan so, if you can sort yeah, me out. Yeah, your hair on average will grow anywhere between um, half an inch every four weeks. So okay. you'll find that some people can get a good... Some people's hair grows faster than others. Some people's hair grows slower than others. So normally, anywhere between six to eight weeks, you will you'll get you should get good co good enough coverage out of it. Um, just a little bit of an old wives' tale as well. When people said that my hair stopped growing, your hair doesn't stop growing because you carry on getting roots. The only reason why your hair is not growing anymore is because the ends of it are snapping off because they are dry. So you need to make sure that you look after the condition of your hair. Your hair is designed to keep on growing constantly. So and what, what, what do you do stop. about what do you do about the end? Is that moisture or is that so, protein? Um, it, again, it would depend. So if somebody's hair's dark, if they just use dark tints or don't even tint it, and they've just got naturally dark hair, you've got to remember the second the second that your hair leaves your scalp, it's dead. Yeah. So right. Davinia, your hair. If you if you were to pull out a strand of your hair. I would say that that one strand, especially from the back, that one strand of hair is probably about four years old, five years, mm. four and a half years old, and right. it's been dead for four years, yeah? So you need to keep on looking after it. That's why treatments, conditioners, shampoos, using the right products, not using heat protection sprays if you are using a lot of straighteners and tongs and things like that. If it's just heat and damage, if it's just heat related, you need to be putting something moisturizing on it. So like a moisturizing oil or a really good treatment or a heat protection spray before you blow dry it and before you straighten it. If it's because you're blonde all over and you're quite heavily highlighted, um, then it's purely because it's probably A, you've had a lot of heat put through there because you're still going to be straightening it and blow drying it. But it's had removed from it all of the natural goodness that's left in there. Um, so that's where you need to make sure you are using the right sort of shampoos and conditioners. So for things like heavily highlighted, damaged hair, so protein-based ranges. Um, but always, 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 if you are going to be somebody that's blow drying and straightening it regularly, always use a heat protector on it, um, just because it... It, it makes a massive difference. It really, really does. Well, and it I, also... I, I, don't, I don't blow dry my hair at all. Like, mine's just like scruffy, not as everybody... Oh, I want to feel special now that you blow dried it scruffy. for us. I know, it's <laughs> normally just whacked up, scruffy, not. So I think this is just pure chemical damage. It is. Then so... That's exactly what that is. And because, because it's not, if you're not putting any heat on it, then it, well, it, you can't dry it out. You know, obviously, I mean, you're, you're, you're stuck in um, a slightly warmer climate than what some of our other followers on here are at the minute. But sun damage and things like that, it can help. You know, it, it does make a big difference. Um, but if you're somebody like yourself that doesn't really blow dry it or anything like that, no. it is just purely because it's, it's it's been there for quite a while now. And if we don't use the right things on it, or if we don't look after it, you've clearly had that highlighted. So there is, a, there is an element of chemical well, damage. I, I, I did it myself. It. I just got a load of bleach and I just like dipped it in it. <laughs> <laughs> and went along well, with it's my It's a good job you're wearing your heart, if you? <laughs> I don't advise I people to do that. I had a big that. of blue there <laughs> and just like tied it up and just, I don't know, <laughs> went and had a coffee and just waited. <laughs> Uh, on that man. note, <laughs> I'm signing off from this awful woman, Saturday. <laughs> okay, right. Well, let's. On that note, let's wrap up. Okay. Yeah. So, Craig, thank you so much. This You're video welcome. is going to be available for the next 24 hours. Like I said, I'm going to upload it on YouTube on Monday. I'll do a link. And it will have all the products you've mentioned in. So you send me a list of your favorite products and I'll mm -hmm. whack them into the video with like an editor. 
and um, everyone can watch it. And then obviously everyone can um, DM you for any of the questions, particularly yeah. over a Vader product. Completely. But I mean, I mean yeah. you're, you're yeah. more than happy to do that because you're stuck in South Africa on your yeah. own. Well, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> got nothing else to do yeah. except, you know, spread the wisdom. Okay, Sorry, so... Drop. Dropped you there. So, Craig, listen, yeah. thank you so much for that. I am You're welcome, delighted. Darling. I am absolutely delighted that, you know, you just talked me through that. It would have been too big a job for me. I would have ended yeah. up blotchy. It would have all dripped down my face and I would have been exactly. seething. Yeah, well, thank you exactly. so much, babe. And I will see You're you welcome. when you get back. We'll see you when you get back. Love, love, love to everybody. We'll bye, darling. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.